Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So on today's episode of The Process, I will take you through my process of making a Mandalorian helmet. It was for a friend of mine for his birthday. Um, be sure to stick to the end. I have a special announcement to make. All right, let's get to it. All right, I'm just setting up out here outside of my apartment. First things first, just gotta sand off all this rough edges. After I had already placed some Bondo on there, now I'm just trying to sand it down to the surface of the 3D print. This is gonna take a while. As you can see, I had to switch out the sanding sponge a couple times just because the grit of the sanding sponge was not gritty enough or rough enough so be sure to get some good sanding sponges when you're doing something like this and oh yeah i used the air in the can <laughs> to spray off some of that dust just because you know it's kind of toxic so you don't want to be breathing that stuff in there just be sure to do this outdoors or in a very well ventilated area. I was wearing a mask this whole time, but I could still smell the Bondo. That's how bad that stuff is. So definitely don't want to be breathing it. As you can see here, I'm reapplying some more Bondo to certain areas after I had sanded down to the 3D print. This is kind of the whole process here. You sand a little bit, you Bondo a little bit, and you sand some more. I had to switch to inside because it was getting way too hot. Now I'm just like adding some super glue to some areas that were not bonded together from the print. And you can see my face, it was not very pleasant to have that melting plastic paper come up in your eyes. Now I'm getting started on the smaller pieces of the helmet. This is just the ear piece and the back panel piece. Just sanding them down and then cleaning them off with a tack cloth just to get rid of some of that fine dust before I start putting on some uh, fiberglass. Yeah, this stuff is also super toxic. Also, keep in mind, if you're ever gonna do something like this, less is more. You don't wanna use like a whole bunch and then end up with a whole bunch left over. That's a waste of material and yeah, it's not really good to breathe that stuff in either. I was also wearing a N95 mask for this whole process, but again, I could still smell it. It was it was pretty bad. And as you can see, the foam brush wasn't working very well. I was just trying to be cheap and save money. Should have just bought a regular bristle brush, but you know, what are you gonna do? Don't wanna go back to Home Depot and return it just to get another brush. Um, just work with what you have and hope for the best. So the reason why I'm using fiberglass instead of just bondoing everything, one, it takes too much time to bondo and it's like almost impossible to sand. Two, the fiberglass tends to fill in the gaps a lot better and it supposedly evens out on its own. So now I'm doing that whole thing that I did to the ear pieces and all the small pieces to the helmet. Again here I wish I had a bristle brush just because the foam brush kept falling apart and it was not doing very well so it was just making everything clump together and it it definitely caused a lot of runs to happen so I ended up having to clean that stuff up too. Moral of the story, don't skimp out on good brushes. After letting it dry overnight I just put on a thin layer of primer just so that I can see what other defects I need to fix or bumps I need to sand down and let me tell you there were a lot oh how do you guys like my ghetto ass spray stand I just found this card outside and just put it together and so now I end up using wood filler to kind of fill in some of that gap that was left behind due to the fiberglass not completely filling in. This stuff works a lot better than Bondo, but for some reason it doesn't like to stick to plastic. 
or at least to 3d printed stuff but i do like using wood filler better than bondo just because it's a lot easier to handle and it's not completely toxic After I sanded it down a little bit more, I just put on another layer of primer just to cover up some of that defect. Now that the first or I guess second layer of primer had dried off, I started spraying it with a different primer this time. This is a automotive grade filler primer. The brand is Duplicolor and I got it at my local auto parts store. As you can see, it's a lot more matte than that other one that I was using. And it was definitely filling in more of the tiny little gaps that was still on the helmet. After I let it sit for like 10 minutes, I added another coat just for extra thickness for this next step. You guessed it, more sanding. Except now I'm using a much finer grit sandpaper. I think this was like 400 grit or something. I don't want to sand down past the primer. I just wanted to clean it up a little bit just because there might be some areas that might be sticking out a little bit proud. So I'm just getting those areas and then I'm gonna add on the final coat of metallic paint. Shout out to my wife for being my camera woman. Now I'm just adding a coat of metallic paint to the helmet. This one didn't turn out the way I was hoping it would. It's a little bit shiny, not like the way it is in the show. For that look, I had to use a different type of paint and I was not really looking to spend more money on this. And plus I was running out of time. So gotta stick with what you have. Final step is just to put on a clear coat to protect the paint. This is the way. <laughs> now I'm working on the visor for the helmet. And instead of actually getting an actual visor type, plastic i bought a piece of smoked acrylic just to see if it worked and it, it kind of does but it was just a pain in the ass because i had to cut it to this t-shape and man that took forever especially when you're using a handsaw Ugh. so now i had to bend the acrylic piece into a curved shape and i don't have a heat gun of course so i end up using my stove it works for the most part it just also again took a long time man this whole project just took a long ass time and i was just struggling my hands got way too hot so i had to use some oven mitts just to hold on to the piece so pro tip when you're doing some type of heating on uh, acrylic and it comes like that with the little brown sticky thingy on there it's just masking tape peel off that piece before you do any of the heating because then if you heat it while that's on there, it kind of transfers the glue to the acrylic. So then your acrylic ends up having this weird texture on it. I learned that the hard way, so you don't have to. Now I'm just gluing it in to the helmet with hot glue. And then I just glued in some felt for comfort. And there you have it. A finished Mandalorian helmet. Well, mostly finished. It's still kind of rough, but hey, I'm done. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked this episode of The Process. Like and subscribe. Tune in for more. Next time, I'll attempt to cook with my mom's secret recipe. Subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Peace out. This is the way.